Pastor Moses Adayo married my wife. And he is the person that I've been reporting my matter to. Each time I have problem with my wife, I will report Now, to wow, my people. Did they see this kind thing? Hey, not the small thing, no. Uh -huh. This matter, don't they go for a while now? When this man, what did they call Bright Ben, come out, come talk, say, in pastor, when did they call Moses Adeyo, go marry in wife, in wife, when he put money for in head, he do traditional marriage with her, he do white wedding with her, he say this in pastor, go marry the woman. Hmm. Hi guys, it's your girl Sandra Idubo. You're welcome to Sandra Talk Show. It is your first time of stopping by. Do as well to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sandra Idubo. Follow us on our Facebook page at Sandra Idubo's page and Sandra Talk Show. Follow us on our Instagram at Sandra Idubo Official and Sandra Talk Show underscore. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. My people now, wow, this matter get us a bit. But for this video, my people, I go show now the where this um, Mr. Ben Bright for come out, come talk his own story. His wife self, when they call Tina, so still come out, she still talk her own story. I go play everything for her now. So, but uh, before I do that one, make I just still talk my own opinion for this matter. The way that they talk for this matter, two of them, well, they judge the way people go to take uh, believe them. You understand? Uh -huh. The wife say uh, that's Tina. She said the man say ben, uh, Bright no ever take care of her one day. Bright no ever take care of her one day. Now suffer, suffer. She suffer till she come out. He not only do that one, he they abuse her. Uh -huh. All those things many when she talk. Then the man says, see, come, come talk. Say the woman, he pay, uh, he pay bright price on the woman. Because for her story, for the woman's story, the woman say the man not pay bride price for her head, but he just can't do traditional wedding. But the man say he pay bride price. True, true, my people. I never really see any tradition. When person go just go, you go buy drink, buy uh, food, go do marriage when he not pay bride price. Uh -huh. So mostly look that part well. Okay, but they know who they talk through for this matter and who they lie. I'm not really they judge any of them, but I just they talk them as I say they hear the matter. I never hear them before. Let me carry the talk them. So if you say it's not possible, you want to see money, take buy drink, buy food. Then not go see money put for the woman head. They say they owe bright price. Uh -huh, because now we say they want to make us understand. Now be that one. So, okay, my people. So, this guy now, this uh, bright Ben now, he said this woman marry, he not pay you. He said, waiting just pay you where, where. He go marry in your own pastor. And mind you, the woman already come up for a house. So uh, seven months after I come up for a house, he go marry pastor. He said this and the pastor when they tell everything to. As in marriage they go, as they quarry, now so in they tell the pastor. But at the end of the day, the pastor nice to go pass him back, go marry in wife. He talk and reach like that, say this in wife, he catch and they cheat, or he, he yes, say he cheats. Just three days. After their wedding, the woman cheat. So the man no ever really thinks that this woman they faithful to her. Uh, if you not still hear the way this woman take talk, say the man they always accuse him of being unfaithful. At times, if man never catch you for that kind of thing, or if you never see that kind of thing with you, you know just carry they accuse you up and down. Now, the man are crazy. You understand? So I know they judge for them, or I know they in the side of anybody, but I just they reason the matter. But the woman says still talk, say the man not ever take care of her for eleven years. Go reach five thousand naira, the man not fit drop for her or her children. Tell me that they me she take care of herself or the children. Now only she they do everything right from time. Now you sit down for eleven years. I don't know. Uh -huh. So anyway, my people. This now where I go draw the curtain right now. I go live on a make on a banner self. Just watch the whole matter. Make on a see as it just take play. The man talk, the woman talk. Okay, so make on a leave on a comment down below. What you not think about this video? I go see you now for my next video. Bye. See you all. My name is Bright Ben. I posted something on Facebook that adultery. My pastor married my wife. Why I came on air, my wife and the mother came on air and said I didn't pay for my wife bride price. I married my wife traditionally. If you go to my wall on Facebook, you see the pictures and the brother thing. I married her traditionally. 
after the traditional marriage, I gave the village boss to come to uh, River State for wedding proper. Within the wedding process, the officiating pastor, he's still alive today, asked my father-in-law, this elder brother to my father-in-law, because my father-in-law is late, asked him, am I owing any dime in the village? He says, no, the video is with me. The pictures is with me. My marriage certificate is with me. I, that, have I finished all everything that I am supposed to do in the village? The man says yes. We now proceed by joining us in holy matrimony. After that, we began to live as husband and wife. I am once a treasurer in Roma Cross Youth Association. I am once a leader in Oye Mill. Because of the OMA matter, they close OMA. I have been paying my mother-in-law every OMA day through his son. The son worked for me in the market. I have been a friend to the family and I have been a brother to the family. I love my wife so much, I have never laid my hand on her for the past of, since 12 years of marriage. We have three children who lost one. As it is, they came to her and say, I didn't pay for her price price. Look at how it happens. Before I said adultery and my pastor married my wife. I had a problem with my wife for a year. She left my house and out of our settlement, she gave me a condition for me to rent an apartment outside my community before she would come back. And before then, I have been attending World Bank Assembly, Pastor Moses Adayo's church. I have been worshipping there from Roma Crossi to Eneka. Then my wife gave me that condition, I accepted. I went and rent an apartment where I am staying now, and she came back. I took her to World Bank. The first day we went to church, she went to church with me. I introduced her to the church members. After church service, I went to the pastor's office with her. I saw pastor, his wife, and I introduced my wife, Mrs. Tina Onyechi Bright. I introduced her to my pastor, Adeyayo Moses, with the wife. We were all happy. The wife now gave my wife an appointment being an assistant choir mistress. She started the work as an assistant choir mistress. She started going to church. As I'm talking to you, the, any church member that knows my wife should still co uh, comment if I'm telling lies. That knows Pastor Daria's wife, comment if I'm telling lies. I know I'm saying the truth. Today, the mother has come to her that I didn't pay for her daughter's head. Who on earth that will do traditional marriage and white wedding without paying a diary for the daughter's head? Nobody. The world should know that nobody does that. That after, before, after traditional marriage, if you want to go for wedding, you must pay every dime in the family before they accept that white wedding for them to come and hand over their daughter to you in the altar, which they did. I am not surprised of what happened today. But what I'm saying, I'm not against of she marrying. What I'm against is, why must she be my pastor that I've been laying my complaint to? I started like this. I accused my wife of not being faithful to me. I complained to pastor. Pastor said I should call my wife. I called my wife. My wife refused to go that I should forget about it. I should tell Pastor that we have settled, which I did. Today, I saw my wife being married with the pastor. And my wife left my house 
for seven months. She left my house for seven months. And the same pastor is the pastor that I've been reporting matter to for settlement between I and my wife. I love my wife. I put her in social media. Yes, I celebrate her in every reason of life. I've never laid my hand on her. I celebrate her and I know she loves me. Now, why I came to social media is that my life is at stake. Pastor, because before somebody will take what belongs to you, it must not be with empty eye or anything. But I did not ask my wife to return back to me. No. Let the marriage work for them. But why, I'm, why I came on air is that it, she said, one, they did not return anything to me. No divorce paper. No anything. Even the person that I'm reporting my matter to was the person that married my wife. Being my my, the owner of the church, Pastor Moses Adayo, married my wife. And he is the person that I've been reporting my matter to. Each time I have a problem with my wife, I will report to him. I've, I gave my wife oath, tell her to take Bible. She took the Bible and swore that from today, she will not meet another man again. After that day, after four days, she took that oath, she left my house and stayed for seven months. After the seven months, what I'm seeing is him, my pastor, wedding my wife. So I came for I came now to tell them to tell the public that this is how it happens. I am no more saying she should come back for me, but I'm telling the world to that my so I came to tell the world that my life now is at stake. Because before somebody will take what belongs to you, he must prepare for you to die. And but since I have not they, they did not succeed of killing me and I have seen it. Let the world know that anything that happens to me, Pastor uh, Moses Adayo is involved with it. Because even the first, when I married my wife, when I wedded her, her former boyfriend slept with her after three days of our matrimonial wedding. And I took it uh, with me that I asked her, she said it's a mistake, that her uh, girlfriend set her up, that her girlfriend invited her, her chief replacement uh, invited her, her be, uh, best friend, and she never knew that the boy is in her house. And when she went, and she saw that the, the, the former boyfriend and the boy took advantage of her. The same my mother-in-law, I told her this particular matter. She said I should not worry that that is her friend. She said that they want to scatter my marriage, I should go on with my marriage, which I did. Nobody hear it. I've been holding my wife because I know I love her. But the same person I've been complaining my matter to, that is my pain. My pain is not for my wife to come back. My pain is, is not that I am the first person that have ever uh, been divorced by a woman or anything, but I've not received any divorce paper. I've not received any message from the village that uh, we are, this marriage is over. Um, my people are, do not know if the marriage is over or not. What I saw is my resident, my pastor, General Vasya, married my wife. It's wrong. It's wrong. That is my pain. That is my worry. That is where I'm capitalizing on. I'm not saying that I'm gonna, I will marry by tomorrow. I will marry any time. So that is why I say let the world know that my life is at stake. It's after my life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I followed him borrowing money. He asked me to borrow money. I borrowed money in my school. They are still there. The debt of the money I borrowed, I'm still paying it till date. The, the money I borrowed is this pastor that is helping me now to foot those bills. I borrowed money for his sake. His student school fees that have hit like this, I'm, I'm, I'm paying it one by one. Grad, I've not finished paying the debt till now. Go to Holy Child School, Mokushi and ask. They are all aware of the story. It didn't end there. Now, after everything, we come to that place. We come to the house where we are living right now. Now the thing is, feeding is a problem in the house. Ask Bright if he has given me upkeep since 11 years I've married him. Even if it is 5,000 Naira upkeep, go and ask him. Go and ask Bright if he has done anything. Well, I don't complain. It's normal. He may not have it. 
I keep living my life the way I'm living it. I keep surviving the way I'm surviving it. It didn't stop there. This same bride, after one year, I returned back to him. Where he took me to the church, he has met uh, one church he wants to be attending. I should live with him. I know that. I left with him. Now, the issue now is, at the end of it all, I came back, we started living outside the family. Bride started from where he stopped. He started the worst. The worst is that I shouldn't go to work. I should be a housewife during the pandemic. I shouldn't go anywhere. He called people. He said his men, the men, men are chasing me. I'm chasing men. He saw anybody around me. He will nail them. He has done so many things. He chased people that call me more that away from me. The youths, the teenagers. He said they're all sleeping with me. That was it. So he told me that the only way for him to give me a total support into my music, because I have gone to the studio to do a skeletal work of my music, he said not in his house. Not in his house. Now, the issue that is that he said I have affairs outside, that there are many men that are chasing me and all that, that I must take an oath for him. I must take an oath for him. He said, I should take an oath. That's the only way you allow me to have peace in his house. I now begged him. If I take an oath, the record of the oath is with me. I recorded it. I have record of it the day I took the oath. I said, if I take an oath for you, will that make me to be a free woman? I can go. He said, I can go to the moon. He will be sleeping. I should take an oath that there is no man that is going to sleep with me. Blah, blah, blah. I said, is it for both of us? He said, no, it's just him alone. I took that oath for bright just to prove to him that I am innocent. I took oath against my faith. I took oath against my faith just to prove to him that I don't have any skeleton in my cupboard. And I asked him, do you have peace? And I say, I have peace. But that is the worst. He started doing the worst. I'll go to borrow food outside. I'll go and, you know, no, just negligence. Sometimes they will go carry the children and buy them food for them to eat. Me, I will stay hungry. A neighbor will just give me food to eat. I will just be surviving it. I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to die. He looked at me one morning. He said, there is no marriage between us. That I'm just in his house wasting his time. That I'm a smelling thing. He chased me out of our room. That I'm a smelling thing. That smelling thing, he called smelling thing. He thrown in the garbage. He threw me in the garbage, thinking I'm going to die. He says, make my life miserable. Now, when last I hear about his name, I will, I will run away. That's what he told me. And I told him I'm not going to die. That he's going to make my life miserable and all that. Now, the last straw that breaks the camel's back is that I refuse taking all these things. He told me vividly that number one, he's going to put acid in my cream. I don't want to bring my children into this because even my children became scared and they were crying. My son will embrace me. My son of four years will embrace me and say, Mommy, don't worry, I will take care of you. He abused me before my children. I don't talk. He called me a weak woman. And you came on social media to tarnish an innocent man's image. You came on social media, bright. You've done your worst. You want to get fame. You, you bend to your knee that you're going to destroy me. But let me tell you, this is my rising moment. You bend on your knees that over your dead body when you see me standing right and fulfilling my destiny. You throw me in the garbage. But the seed you throw in the garbage find a means of growing and becoming something. I decided to leave his house. How? When I left, when I... I left his house. One day, he just locked me up and said, I'm not going for church program. That night, he locked the door and put the key in his pocket before my kids. I said, "Has got to the extent that you start locking me and walking away. So anything can happen to me. If there's a fire outbreak, I can't escape anywhere. He told me that the children I'm even talking about, it's not when I'm alive to see them. I will start talking about them. When I'm alive, that when I'm dead, I'm rubbish and move on with his life, then highest his money, my people don't talk, and all that, he locked me up, 
I packed my things before his eyes. I said, Bright, it is over. Bright, it is over. I'm not going to do this anymore. This is the last straw that will bring the camels back. I can't die in your house. I can't die because I want to prove myself. I want to prove myself that I'm... I'm, I'm a good woman. Before his eyes, I packed my bags. I kept them or whatever. He told me to leave. That I should leave self is done with me. That it's just his children I'm taking care of. I packed my bag and I kept it. The next morning, my, that night, I escaped by my children. My daughter went and looked for spare key. And my son, they hid the key and come and give me and say, Mommy, run away. Mommy, escape. That was how I left the house that night. That was how I escaped out of that trap. In the morning, we pack our things. I pack the things, call the taxi, pack the things to my mother's house. That was on the 28th of November last year. Pastor Moses Adeyo was not in the picture. I have nothing with him then. I went to my mother's house. Bright knew that I'm in my mother's house. Even that day as I was going, he saw me. Let's talk. Okay, can we see? I told him, I'm not if you want us to talk, come to my mother's house. As he came to my mother's house, he saw me. I said, This is where we are, and this I want to be. I'm done. I pick up a Bible to renounce the oaths I took. He ran away. He made he saw me pick up a Bible. He left the house because he knew I want to renounce the oaths. I lured him one day in a restaurant. I have a record of it, the oath I renounced. I lured him, told my sister to follow me. I didn't tell my sister what I was going to do. Before I quickly bring up the Bible, I renounce the oath. I said, your oath is no longer binding me. I am a free woman. I can live my life. It's not working. Let's not kill ourselves. Go your way. Let me go my way. He said over his dead body. It was not enough. It was not enough. I left. I left to Lagos on the, on the second week of December. The first week of December. That's when I left Lagos. I was struggling. I will have to squat with a friend. Because if I'm in butter court, Bright will, will ping me. Bright will trace me and will block my ways. That is his nature. He will always stop me on the road. I will cry, yo. I will be begging for rescue. I have to leave butter court so that I can have my peace. I went to Lagos. I started my life afresh. I started squatting and squatting. I got a mini job in Lagos. Nobody knew my story. I covered up. I started my life afresh. I started any small, small money to be able to take care of myself. It didn't end there. That was how it happened. It was calling. I said it's over. Now, to make it official, I came from Lagos to Port Harcourt in April. April. He said I left his house in seven months and I ran and lived with Pastor Moses Adeyo. I've been in Lagos all this while. I came in April to my village. I went to my people and told them what has been going on. They shouted. I've been going through all this. I refuse telling them. They invited Bright. The king of my community invited Bright and his father. He called his father. His father refused answering him. His father did not respond because they all know the story. Bright came with his friend. They told him to go and bring his father. He didn't bring his father. We had an agreement. We, we went to my, my house. My uncles, my father, the people that gave me anti marriage sat and they I held my view. I opened my mouth and told them what has been happening. They all lamented. Even the friend he came with was shocked that he didn't tell him to this extent. Right. They asked me if it is true. He said, yes, what I said was true. They said, but you never come to tell us that our doctor is not with you. You just sit it up all this while. But he said he doesn't know where I am, that I ran out of his house without his notice. He has been begging. Now, they asked me what I want. I told them that. I'm, the marriage is over. I'm no longer interested. I want to move on and live my life. I'm no more interested. I have tried. This is the fourth time now. I can't be running and be coming back. I can't be running and coming back. That was how they, they said, okay, since you've decided to marry, we will not force you. Bright, our daughter says she's no longer interested. Whatever you've paid, they brought out the ledger, the, off, the family ledger, where they put down anything that has been done or that has been paid, bright price. They check it and they found out that Bright did not pay bright price. And I can remember vividly before I returned after the one year, my uncle called him and said, You've not paid, we'll check in the list. There was no specific money. Come and do it. 
he just ignore it that he has married, he has married. Because the dowry is what they're supposed to refund him. Not like the money they bought for drink and all that. They said, we don't have any, we wanted to refund you the, the dowry. Look at it. There is no dowry, specific amount, whether it's one naira or what. That was it. Before you know it, they told him, we would have collected the children self, but because we love you. Okay, go and take care of the children. Let our daughter live. And make sure you don't come after her. He pleaded that they should give him more time to plead. It's okay, we'll give you two weeks. If you're able to talk to her after two weeks, she accepted, then you will come back. But if she didn't accept after two weeks, leave her alone. If you come after her, we'll come after you. I went back to Lagos. I went back to Lagos after the meeting. I wasn't with Pastor Moses Adeyo. Pastor Moses Adeyo is living in the church premises in World Bank Assembly. There are people there. I'm living in Lagos. I wasn't living with him. I went back to Lagos to continue my life. He do call me until I blocked him. I told him, don't disturb me again. There is nothing between us. I have moved on. I have, I will, if I want to live my life, I want to get married, whatever. He said, over his dead body, would I get married? Over his dead body, would I, I go to another man? Over his dead body, that is, is him for life and death, whatever. I told him, I have nothing to do with you. You don't owe my life. I have my life to live. Before I came, I came back two weeks ago. Even the day as I came back on Friday, he saw me on Sunday of it when he came to see the children in my mother's house. He saw me. He saw me. I wasn't in Pastor Moses' house. He said he doesn't know where I am. He saw me. And they, that why did I? I said I have nothing to do with you. If you want to take care of the children, these are our children. Take care of them. He saw me. It's my life. He dumped me in a dustbin. I know that trying to bury me. Another man picked me up and tried to give me a new life. And he just stand up to punish my image. He stood up to render another man, to render an innocent man's name useless just because he chose to identify with me. He promised me that there is no man that wants to stand for me, that he will make them miserable. And that is what he's trying to do. But my God has frustrated his counsel. I am alive today. And I'm happy. I don't want to ruin my happiness. But I pray that God will forgive you. I pray you find forgiveness before God bright. I pray that you go forgive you for tarnishing a man of God's image. You choose to tarnish his image because I choose to live. You want to dump me in the ground and I refuse. Now, there are so many women out there who are dying like this. And because of what the society will say, they choose to die. If I have died in Bright House, people will say, why didn't you talk? There are women that are dying. Why didn't you live? I choose to live. And I choose to find a new life. I start a new life. And I've committed the worst crime. Because I refuse to die in Bright House. I refused to go through the same pain and torture. My children are going through so much emotional torture now because of his attitude and things he has done to them. But I don't want to put them in the picture. I didn't do this for you to believe me. I don't need your belief. I don't need your opinion. I don't need your support. But the same way you guys carry evil news to go viral in the social media, I want you to tell the world that I'm a woman that has strived to survive out of this stuff for 11 good years. He knows 11 years of pain, 11 years of torture, 11 years of disgrace and humiliation, 11 years of pain, 11 years of crying at night. He will come back anytime, any day. I will open the door for him. He will abuse me and call me a useless woman. All these things happen. Now, the thing is, I choose to marry. I have the right to marry whosoever I want to. If I found love with anybody, it is my life, nobody's life. People should leave Pastor Moses Adeyo out of this. He's innocent. I'm begging you. Leave the man of God out of this. Let Bright face me. People should tell Bright to come and face me. Let him come and face me. Let's talk. I have some records of his strength. Let him come out and face me. I didn't want to talk, but he has pushed me to the world. He's trying to make me to go viral as a bad woman. And lastly, before I go, before I go, everybody is sympathizing with him. He's a free man right now. 
as many young ladies who are desiring husbands, bright is free. I challenge you to go and marry bright. So many of you that have daughters and sisters, go to his page, go and marry bright. If you're able to live with him for three months, then you come back to me and shake my hand. Go and marry bright. He has his friends who know this story. His club members know his story very well. Go and ask him what happened. Go and ask him what happened. Go and ask people that knows me. They all know. Go to Lumokroshi. There's nothing more. Go and ask about this story. I rest my case. If you're interested, you want to marry him, go ahead and marry bright. He is there. I choose to live for life. I choose to be alive for my children. I choose to live to fulfill my destiny. I choose to be a strong woman. I don't want to talk about this. I have so many things to talk about, but I'm coming. I'm going to tell the world my story because my story is large. God gave me life and rescued me from the hand of a lion that wants to devour me for 11 years. I run and you guys feel I should remain there and die. And if I have died, the same word will say, why didn't she run for her life? And I choose to run out of my life and you guys want to... Now take this video. Let him see it. Let the world see it. And let so many women that are into this pain see it. You have to be strong and come out of it. It doesn't matter what the world will tell you. It doesn't matter how they will name you and rob you nail. You can still be a better person. The law can still give you a second chance. The law can still give you a way of survival. I'm begging the name of God. For now, let me rest my case. I'll come back soon. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, but please share this video. Vindicate this man is innocent. I'm begging you. He's very innocent. He just wants to tarnish his image. Please vindicate him. God bless you.